Father, we come this morning to say thank you. Father God, we thank you for all you've done for us. We thank you for the blessing of your presence. We thank you for this worship service. We thank you for the sweet, sweet spirit that's in this place. Father God, right now I would ask that you would hide me behind the cross. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Anoint me afresh. Remove anything from me that would distract me from you. Use me in a special way. Open the hearts, the eyes, the ears of your people to hear what you would have them to hear. And we ask these blessings in the precious name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Let the church say, amen. 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 You may be seated in God's presence. The message this morning is not going to go quite the way it ordinarily does. And so I'll let you know when it's time to stand for the word of God. First of all, I would like to say thank you to Pastor Jones in his absence. I call him Pastor Dad. Um, just so grateful for him and his guidance in my life and our relationship. And of course, my relationship with all of you, which has not stopped. Um, I just I thank you for reaching out to me when you need me. And I always want to be there for you. And uh, always welcome a call from a Pilgrim member. Amen, amen. And I bring you greetings from 12th Street Christian Church, where I serve as the assistant pastor under the Reverend Dr. Paul H. Sadler. And so it's just good to be home. Same thing I say when I get to go to Detroit. It's just always good to be home. And so this morning, this, this sermon... Um, It's interesting. I wanted to sing thank you because that was on my heart. But there are words to a song that are so appropriate for this sermon. I'm not going to sing again, but I'm going to start off talking about it. And there's a song back in um, 1995 that was uh, written by Dorothy Norwood. And it's most appropriate for this message today song says, shake, 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 shake the devil off. In the name of Jesus, shake the devil off. He's under my feet. Shake the devil off. He's under my feet. Shake the devil off. Satan, I rebuke you. Shake the devil off. Satan, I rebuke you. Shake the devil off. Satan, I rebuke you. Shake the devil off. In the name of Jesus, shake the devil off. In the name of Jesus, shake the devil off. Now, I want you to act as though it's story time. You remember when you were young, you you went to the library and the teacher or librarian read to you? Because this message today has to do with two stories. And I'm going to tell you the first story because it leads into the second story, which is our text for this morning. In Acts chapter 21, Paul was arrested for allegedly teaching against Jewish beliefs and tradition. Paul was persecuted for teaching and preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Just before being imprisoned, Paul had an opportunity to defend himself in front of a crowd of Jews who wanted to kill him. Paul spoke Aramaic to the Jews in order to establish common ground with this audience. Paul gave his personal testimony about his conversion from Saul to Paul that many of us are familiar with. He had beaten and imprisoned Jews who believed in Jesus Christ. To Paul, who started proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ, this was rather odd. And so the crowd listened intently to Paul. But when he explained that Jesus had instructed him to witness to the Gentiles, It angered the crowd even more, and they still 
wanted to kill him. Though the Jewish believers were supposed to be a light to the Gentiles, telling them about the one true God, instead they became more exclusive and segregated from the Gentiles. Jesus told Paul to immediately leave Jerusalem because the people would not believe his teaching or his testimony. Listen to how God orchestrated Paul's escape. When the Roman officers tied up Paul, preparing to beat him with whips for inciting such riots, Paul revealed his Roman citizenship. He began to speak in Greek. Because Jerusalem was under Roman control, any uproar in the city had to be investigated by Roman authorities. A Roman citizen could not be punished until he had been proven guilty of a crime. But Paul had been born a Roman citizen, whereas the commander who ordered him to be punished had purchased his citizenship. Those who purchased citizenship were considered inferior to those who were citizens by birth. Sound familiar? Which was all the more reason why they could not punish or kill Paul while he was in Israel. Paul knew the law, so he claimed his right to a hearing in Rome before Caesar. So this leads us to our text. And in our text, Paul was still a prisoner on this journey to Rome to defend his calling and his life. Turn with me to Acts chapter 28, verses 1 through 10. Acts chapter 28 verses 1 through 10, and I'll be reading from the New Living Translation. Your words might be different, but the meaning is always the same, and this is story part two. It says, once we were safe on shore, we learned that we were on the island of Malta. The people of the island were very kind to us. It was a cold and rainy night. So they built a fire on the shore to welcome us. As Paul gathered an armful of sticks and was laying them on the fire, a poisonous snake, driven out by the heat, bit him on the hand. The people of the island saw it hanging from his hand and said to each other, a murderer, no doubt. Though he escaped the sea, Justice will not permit him to live. But Paul shook off the snake into the fire and was unharmed. The people waited for him to swell up or suddenly drop dead. But when they saw he had waited a long time and saw that he wasn't harmed, they changed their minds and decided he was a god. Near the shore, where they landed was an estate belonging to Publius, the chief official of the island. He welcomed us and treated us kindly for three days. As it happened, Publius's father was ill with fever and dysentery. Paul went in and prayed for him, and laying his hands on him, he healed him. Then all the other sick people on the island came and were healed. As a result, we were showered with honors, and when the time came to sail, people supplied us with everything we could need for the trip. This is the word of God for the people of God. You may be seated. And for the next few minutes, we're going to talk about this subject. Shake it off. Shake it off. Clearly, this pit stop in Malta was God-ordained. After all, when was the last time you were able to make a fire 
in the rain? And when's the last time you were able to make a fire with wet wood? With God, all things are possible. Fire has always been a symbol of God's divine presence. Back in the Old Testament, we saw God appear to Moses in the form of a pillar of fire. God had promised safe passage for his servant Paul, and even a poisonous snake was unable to harm him. God needed Paul to complete his journey to Rome because he still had work for Paul to do. However, at every stop along the way, God continued to use Paul. One of the commentaries said this, Paul continued to minister to others, even as a shipwrecked prisoner. On this trip alone, the Roman army, the chief official of Malta, and many others were affected. So I just have three points, three main points about this story, and then just a few tidbits after that. First point is this. There is a difference between having an episode of pain and suffering. Paul didn't indicate that he felt any pain from the snake bite, and if he did, he just shook it off. But as a shipwrecked prisoner who had often been mistreated along his journey to Rome, Paul suffered for the sake of Christ. Suffering is defined as a state of ongoing pain, distress, or hardship. And I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but it's the truth. God reserves the right to call you to suffer for others' sake, just like Jesus suffered for our sake. Pain is for yourself. But suffering is for someone else. So they can become connected to God as a result of seeing you suffer. Secondly, Paul is at a temporary pit stop along his journey, not yet at his destination. Just like Paul, we are all on a journey, whether it's life's journey, a journey to a new home, a new job, through school, through a relationship, a journey towards our goals, through careers, through retirement, to a new location. We are all on a journey. One of my sisters stopped me this morning, told me she's going back to school. She's on a journey. And sometimes in life, we need a pit stop to confirm our directions. Time to just think about what just happened? What's happening right now? And what's about to happen? I took a pit stop this past Friday. I didn't go to work. I, said, I called in. I said, I just need a minute because I needed to spend time with God. I need to think about all the things that were going on in my life and to think about what was coming next. And so we all need to take that time, that, that pit stop time. And then thirdly, here are a few pit stop lessons from the Isle of Malta. Lesson number one, if you can do it without God, then God didn't call you to do it. If you can do it without God, then God did not call you to do it. Second lesson, snakes pop up whenever you're focused on your journey. So don't quit just because you've been bitten. Shake it off and keep moving towards your final destination. Third, you can still be powerful with venom in your system. Because whatever doesn't kill you will make you stronger. Snake bites expose how people really feel about you. When life is going well and you have plenty of money in your pockets and you're healthy, people will smile in your face and want to hang out with you all the time. But as soon as you get sick, 
or laid off from your job and can't find another job for months, people start making up stuff, just like they did when they saw that Paul had been bitten by the snake. Oh, he must be a murderer. Since he survived the shipwreck, justice must be catching up with him. They were just waiting for Paul to drop dead. Then, all of a sudden, he's still alive. He must be a god. People just change just like that. And then the other lesson on Malta, there's healing in wounded hands. The same hand that that snake had bitten is the same healing hand that Paul laid on the sick people. When God's power is working within you, there is victory over venom. No matter what comes your way, God can turn it around and use it for his glory. And you know, there is really something special about that lesson in Malta, that very last lesson. Paul's hand was wounded by that snake, but there was healing in a wounded hand. Amazingly, Jesus' hands were wounded by the nails, but he was still with healing hands. And that's why we say, Lord, send your healing. For this we know, there is a balm in Gilead to heal the soul. You know, what else is amazing? Jesus had a temporary pit stop at the cross, and he taught us how to shake it off. Yeah. He shook off the crown of thorns. Jesus shook off the shackles. Jesus shook off the nails from his hands and the nails from his feet. Jesus shook off death. He descended into hell, but he shook that off too. Yeah. Jesus shook off his burial clothes. Jesus shook off this borrowed tomb. And after all that shaking, on the third day, he got up with all power in his wounded hands. Jesus is telling us today that whatever has nailed you down, shake it off. Whatever has you bound, shake it off. Whatever has you feeling like there's no way out, shake it off. And last but certainly not least, shake, shake, shake. Shake the devil off. In the name of Jesus, shake the devil off. Shake, shake, shake. Shake the devil off. Come on, y'all. Shake, shake, shake. Shake the devil off. Come on now. Shake, 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 shake the devil in the Jesus, shake the devil. How about this? Stomp, 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 stomp the devil. Stomp, 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 stomp the devil off. Stomp, 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 stomp the devil off. In the name of Jesus, he's under my feet. No, that's all right. Shake, shake, shake. Shake, shake, shake. Shake the devil off. Y'all fix it up. Shake, shake, shake. Shake the devil off. In the name of Jesus, shake the devil off. All right, amen. We thank God for this preacher. We thank God for the word that we have heard. You can shake off some things. Shake off that wet firewood. Shake off that venomous snake. Shake off those haters. Shake off that dead situation. Shake it off in the name of Jesus. We thank God for this preacher. We thank God for the words that we have heard. There may be somebody here who's wondering what all the fuss is about. We get the power to shake up earthly situations by the indwelling of Jesus Christ and God's Holy Spirit. So we thank God for the power that we have heard today, the preaching of the good news of the gospel. 
that if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is indeed Lord, that he died for us and was risen again by the power of the Holy Spirit to save us, then you shall be saved. If you're here today, we offer Christ to you. You can come to receive Jesus Christ. You can come to receive membership here at Pilgrim Baptist Church. I'm shown up sure that Pastor Louis B. Jones II will be very glad to be your pastor. You can come for restoration. You can restore yourself. You can renew and refresh your membership here. If you've been away for a while and you want to reconnect, you can reconnect that way. If you're streaming online, go to our website. Just put it in the comments that you want to come and either receive Christ or also just to receive membership here at Pilgrim Baptist Church. We thank God for the word that we have heard. That's a... Amen. All right. As the um, praise team uh, uh, prepares, we want to take up an offering for this preacher. She sure enough poured out her soul. She poured herself out for us. You have authority to shake some stuff off in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We're going to follow the lead of the ushers. Her cash app is there. We're going to pray over this offering. God, we thank you for the word that we have heard. We thank you for our beloved sister who returned home in a mighty way. God, we ask that you refresh, revive, restore her. Let her know, God, that there is healing in her walk and in her way as she lets God use her in such a tremendous fashion. We thank God for her. And we're going to show it in a tangible way, God. As you have blessed us, we're going to try to show this preacher a token of our own appreciation. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Nobody do me like Jesus. He's my friend. Can't nobody, can't nobody do me like Jesus. Do me like Jesus. Can't nobody. Can't the Lord, do me like the Lord. I said, Can't nobody, Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Do me like Jesus. He's, He's my friend. Say it again, Can't no, Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like the Lord. Do me like the Lord. I said, Can't nobody, Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Do me like Jesus. He Said he picked me up and turned me, pick me up, turn me around, turn me around, pick me up, me up, turn me around, turn me around, said, pick me pick up, me up, turn me around, turn me around, he, he's my friend. Pick me up and turn, pick me up, turn me around, turn me Turn me around, turn me around. I said, pick me pick up, me up. Turn me around, turn me around. He's, he's my friend. Oh, he's my friend. He's Come on and stand up for this verse. Friend. Oh, he's my friend. He's my friend. Amen. I just wanted to say one thing. I realized and I saw my dear friend Joquina Borges here with her daughters, Victoria and Camille. Uh, Joquina's visiting from Connecticut. We went to undergrad together. We went to law school together. And she's my sister in Christ. She's first lady in Connecticut. And her husband went to law school with us as well. And thank you so much for coming. This was my only opportunity to possibly see her while she was here. And so God bless you all. Amen. Would you stand now for our benedictions? We prepare to leave from this place, but never from God's presence. Please remember Pastor Jones. Uh, he is um, returning, and uh, uh, he really never goes away. He, um, 
loves Pilgrim Baptist Church and the people of Pilgrim Baptist Church, most importantly. Amen, amen. and amen. amen. Holy and all-wise God, we thank you for this worship experience. We thank you, God, for the word that we have heard. We thank you for this worship team, God, this praise team. We ask, God, that you just allow all of us together to be bound in the love of Jesus Christ as we leave from here, trusting that you indeed are the God who is able to keep us from falling and present us before your throne with exceeding great joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be power, majesty, and dominion. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. I said, can't nobody uh -huh. do it like Jesus. Can't no, can't nobody do me like the Lord. Do me like the Lord. I said, can't nobody, can't nobody. do me like Jesus. Do me like Jesus. Sit down. Turn me around. Turn me around. I said, pick me up. Pick me up. Turn me around. Turn me around. I said, pick me. Pick me up. Turn me around. Turn me around. He, he's my friend. Can't nobody. Can't no. Can't nobody. Do me like Jesus. Do me like Jesus. Can't nobody. Do me like the Lord. Do me like the Lord. I said, can't nobody. Can't my body 